cropping systems. This lesson is a continuation of the previous lesson. In the previous lesson, I explained cropping system as the order in which crops are cultivated on a piece of land over a phase time. By this, I mean the sequence of crop production adopted by farmers, the styles they use in carrying out crop production. In the previous lesson, we listed the types of cropping systems that are commonly practiced in our country, Nigeria, and I equally explain the first two, that is monocropping and mixed cropping. In this lesson, I will be explaining continuous cropping and crop rotation. These four methods or types of crop production are the fundamental ones carried out among farmers in our country. Continuous cropping. Continuous cropping is the act of putting a farmland under cultivation year after year. That is, the farmer continually cultivates a farmland. He grows crops on it this year, next year he grows crops on it again. And there are two forms of continuous cropping. There is annual cropping and there is permanent cropping. When it comes to annual cropping, food crops or arable crops such as cassava, granite, maize, millet, sorghum, yam, they are grown in the farmland. And when they mature, they are harvested, the farmland is cultivated again with such crops. The principle is only arable crops are cultivated on the farmland year after year. Arable crops are particularly short in their lifespan, that is, they have short lifespan. When they grow, they mature, the farmer will harvest and then he will grow same type of crops in the farm again. He can choose to grow only one type of crop, such as maize, or he can grow different ones as the year advances. Now, permanent cropping. From the word permanent cropping, it is permanent crops, also known as cash crops, that are grown under permanent cropping. The likes of oil palm, cocoa, coffee, coconut, etc. They are all permanent crops that are grown in permanent cropping. The farmer plants just once. They keep growing on the farmland and all it needs to do is regular maintenance. In permanent cropping, the plantation remains there for a very long time. That is, it can range from 3 years to 20, 30 years. All the farmer does is regular maintenance, such as clearing, application of fertilizer, and on a regular basis, it will be harvesting the fruits of these crops. Coffee is also another permanent crop that is cultivated under permanent cropping. What are the advantages of continuous cropping? The first one is it reduces the cost of land preparation. It reduces the cost of land preparation. Unlike shifting cultivation, where a farmer moves from one farmland, he abandons it, go to another farmland to clear the bush, fall the trees, and stomp again. In continuous cropping, the farmer does not need to carry out all this process again. Like stomping and falling of trees, all these are costly and they increases the cost of production. But in continuous cropping, since the farmer continually uses the same farmland for his farming operation, it does not need to be cultivating fresh farmland. It does not need to be incurring this 
expenses again. Another point is it can be practice where land is scarce. This is particularly important to farmers in the urban areas. That is, farmers that practice uh, their farming operations close to cities. Land is scarce in these places, so continuous cropping can be carried out. You cultivate the land over and over again. It encourages the, 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 the construction of permanent structures. Permanent structures such as storage units like silos, barns, and even farmhouses. All these are permanent structures in the farm. Since the farmer continually cultivates a particular farmland, he has the plan to remain there for a long time. So he can conveniently build structures such as storage units, such as maize cribs, even yamban, farmhouses, where he used in production. What are the disadvantages of this system? The soil fertility is easily exhausted. Since the farmer is going to continually cultivate the farmland, he exhausts the soil nutrients easily. Unless he has to be applying fertilizer as time goes on. It leads to the destruction of soil structure. Regular cropping of a farmland does not make the soil friable and good for production. It turns it into crust, that is, a very hard pan at the surface of the soil that makes uh, good productivity almost impossible. It destroys the soil structure. Now, another one is crop rotation. Crop rotation is the practice of growing different crops on the same land in a regularly recurring sequence. It keeps rotating the crops in a definite order, in a particular pattern. The crops on a particular plot are shifted to another plot by the time another season arrives. Take for instance, this is a simplified form of crop rotation. The crops in plot A are moved to plot B the next year that they want to cultivate. Now, those in plot B moves to plot C, the ones in plot C to plot D, the ones in D to E, and the ones in E to F, then F back to A again in a definite order. It keeps rotating the crops. In that way, the same type of crop is not cultivated on that same plot twice. So each year, it keeps on rotating the crops. This is, this is an example of crop rotation. The principles of crop rotation, by this we mean the guides. The principle that guides crop rotation. If there needs to be, if there have to be a, a good productivity, there is need to follow the guides or the principles of crop rotation. And the first one is, the same type of crop should not be allowed to follow each other on the same plot. Take for instance, potato. You do not follow potato with potato. Now after planting potato this year in a particular plot, there is a need to change it. You can plant maize or leguminous crops such as scalpel. If you plant carrots this year on a particular plot, you cannot plant carrots on the same plot next year. There is a need to rotate it. Another principle is, Deep-rooted crops should not follow deep-rooted crops. By deep-rooted crops, I mean crops that go deep into the soil to obtain nutrients, such as potato, yam, cassava, especially tuba crops. These produce tubers that go way deep into the soil. They obtain nutrients at a particular level that is way down the soil. So there is need to follow these crops with a shallow rooted crops. There, there is always uh, a need to follow them 
to abide by this rule or else the production will not be good enough. Crops that are likely to be affected by the same disease or pest should not be allowed to follow each other on the same plot. Take for instance, there are diseases that affect maize, tomatoes, that when you plant other crops, they can also affect it. Desist from planting such crops alongside each other. Now, crops that consume a lot of nitrogen should be followed by those that add nitrogen to the soil. There are some crops that use a lot of nitrogen from the soil, and nitrogen is an essential element in the soil. Crops such as cereals in general, that is maize, uh, sorghum, wheat, now they obtain nutrients, they obtain nitrogen from the soil, and evil tuber crops such as potato, cassava, and yam. Now these crops should be followed by cowpea. Cowpea is a leguminous crop. It adds nitrogen to the soil. So after planting a crop that obtains nitrogen from the soil, there is need to plant the type that had nitrogen to the soil. Crops that belong to the same group should not follow each other on the same plot. If they belong to the same group, they should not follow each other. By groups, I mean two back crops should not follow two back crops. Series should not follow series. Legumes should not follow legumes. This prevents diseases. Advantages. It replenish or maintain the soil fertility. When you rotate crops, you maintain the soil fertility. Some crops take nitrogen out of the soil. You plant crops that enrich the soil with nitrogen such as leguminous crops, so it helps to maintain the fertility of the soil. Nutrients are used up, and at the same time, they are returned to the soil after you plant other crops. It reduces soil erosion. Since the surface of the soil is always covered with crops, erosion is avoided or greatly reduced in this case. It affords the farmer a variety of crops. In crop rotation, a farmer grows different type of crops depending on the number of plots he has. Depending on this, the amount of uh, plots he divides the farmland into, he gets different variety of crop products. It also ensures efficient utilization of soil nutrients. Since he is planting different type of crops, he is using the soil nutrients very well, especially when the farmer is skillful at replenishing it. It ensures efficient utilization of soil nutrients. A good practice, it is a good practice where land is scarce, especially in urban areas. You just rotate the crops in that way, you can continue producing without reducing soil fertility greatly. It is labor intensive. It requires a lot of labor and technical know-how. There is need for the farmer to be up and doing. There is need for the farmer to employ more ends to be able to carry out this production, especially on a large scale. It is labor intensive. It consumes a lot of labor. Yield may decrease with years. As time goes on, the yield may start decreasing, except in cases where the farmer will have to be replenishing the surface of the, 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 the soil nutrients with fertilizer, such as organic fertilizers or synthesized fertilizers, that is inorganic fertilizers. There is need for him to be replenishing it, or else the yield will be reducing as time goes on. This system also leads to the destruction of soil structure, which may lead to erosion. Because of continuous cropping of the different plots, it leads to encroachment. That is, it turns the soil into 
crust that can in turn lead to soil erosion. It destroys the soil structure due to concurrent cropping. Thank you very much and thank you for watching. I will see you in my next lesson and do have a wonderful day.